uh, I know it's a, though it's the weekend just after the new year, it's a hectic week, week I know. But thank you so much for joining in, Hasit. And uh, thank you, students, for coming in. I'm sure you're going to gain a lot from this session. Many of you have started registering for Future Careers Bridge also. So this is here. If you have any concerns, here is your chance to ask Mr. Hasit for that. But I'm sure Hasit has a lot more to share with us today. Uh, so uh, I mean, I, I don't think I need to introduce uh, Mr. Aghavita, but the thing about him is he's a very passionate IT professional who is very passionate about making sure that the younger generations are doing better than himself. So to me, that, that's what you would expect from a teacher. So I'm very happy to say that I am Hasid's teacher as well, but I'm so happy to see him being very passionate about helping the next generation to be better. So my dear children, you all are in, wonderful, in for a wonderful session where he, you can ask anything without any fear, ask anything from a very experienced professional in the IT industry. Hasit, I don't think I need to keep reading your CV per se, right? Uh, no, yeah. madam, uh, yeah. surely no. Yeah. Um, but thank you very much, uh, madam, uh, for uh, inviting me and um, all of the participants. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining the uh, session today. So I was also uh, a student 20 years ago, uh, I passed out from University of Molotov, just like uh, you all. Um, and um, I'm happy to share uh, what I learned uh, during the last 20 years. Um, and uh, as uh, Madam said, a lot of things I'm actually uh, uh, trying to share with you today are the things I learned uh, by looking at our seniors, our lecturers, especially uh, Vishaka Madam. Uh, who led the uh, department those days uh, and the, the, those things has uh, have helped me a lot uh, during my career and uh, I'm going to tell you uh, some of those uh, secrets today. So uh, feel free to ask any question if you have, um, you can uh, probably the best way is to post it uh, on the uh, chat uh, here. Um, I'll uh, keep uh, watching uh, the chat uh, if I get any question. Uh, so uh, feel free to ask and um, uh, ask questions uh, in the middle of the session. That's no problem at all. Let me, let me start by sharing my screen. All right, I hope. Uh, my screen is shared now. As if we can see it. Yes. Superb. Yeah. All right. So the topic I selected today is to say succeed in your career by meeting industry expectations. So when I say industry ex expectations, this is a very important point because uh, most of you, I assume you would like to enter the IT industry uh, in the years to come. And for you to get into the industry uh, in style, you need to know what we expect as industry. So I come from the industry. Uh, I had worked uh, in the industry for about 20 years, starting as a trainee and uh, working up the ranks uh, of, of my organization. Uh, today uh, in the management team as a CTO of 99X Technology. And also I uh, uh, founded a few startups. Uh, one is Ignite Space, Majority and a couple of others as well. Um, so I want to make this uh, interactive as much as possible. So, so if you can all, um, I'll uh, post this uh, link um, onto the chat. Please, uh, please uh, load uh, this particular link uh, on your computers uh, so that we can actually make this session uh, interactive. Let me uh, figure 
how to post. Where do I have the comments? Hmm. Can somebody uh, help me on this? Uh, do you know how to post? <laughs> because I don't see the um, comments box. Is it it's on the... All right, it's here. Sorry. Um, did you get uh, the message I sent on the chat? It's a your it's a link. Okay, it's a direct message I sent. No, hold on, everyone in the meeting. Yeah, I sent it now. Yes, I think uh, you all got it. So please, um, please uh, uh, load that uh, particular link uh, which I sent onto your screen. So I'll um, let you do that. Um, and uh, also um, some of you can, I can see uh, some people already uh, login in. All right, so with that, I want to ask this particular question. So what do you think as the most important uh, thing for you to uh, succeed uh, in the industry? So it's a question uh, uh, where you can rank these three things. First one is amount of knowledge you have. The second one is the hands-on skills you have. The third one is called the attitude to contribute. Contribute uh, to, uh, to the society, contribute to your organization, that attitude of contribu contributing. So I'll, uh, I can see already we have around 14 people uh, posting uh, their answers uh, to the question. So let me share the screen with you. Um, so I can see um, a lot of people are saying uh, hands-on skills are the most important. And then uh, some of uh, you are saying amount of knowledge. Okay, now the attitude to contribute has taken the second place, but still the hands-on skills are at the top. Um, so while, while, uh, while you all answer that question and think about it a little bit, um, let's take a, a case of a carpenter. We all know uh, the carpenter at our villages. Now think about the scenario where you want to hire a carpenter to build uh, the roof of your house. So you have you have a particular carpenter who's extremely good in his knowledge. He knows all of the different type of wood. He knows which uh, wood uh, is most water resistant. He knows which wood is the best for the flooring. He knows which uh, wood is best for the roofing. Um, that's that's a person with a lot of knowledge. And then you have um, uh, you have a, a carpenter who has knowledge and also skills. He's able to. He has done a lot of work. Uh, he knows how to build a roof. He, he has done it before. Hands-on skills. So the first carpenter with a lot of knowledge, maybe a PhD or a degree, uh, but he has not done any uh, roof building. And then you have another carpenter who has a lot of knowledge, maybe he has a PhD and a degree also, 
but also he has sort of skills. He knows how to build a roof. Out of the two, which one would you actually prefer? Of course, the second one, right? Not the first one. But there's also something more to this. There's something also more to this. So uh, we see a lot of uh, carpenters uh, because I had built a couple of houses uh, for myself and uh, I met a lot of carpenters. Some of them has a knowledge, some of them has a knowledge and skills, but they lack something. They lack their passion or the attitude to actually complete the project. So they are very good skilled carpenters, but they come uh, to work only once a month, right? And then they disappear and they uh, have no responsibility to deliver it. There's no notion of contribution. What should I do? What type of contribution am I doing? So this, uh, so my client is building a house. So when should I build this uh, roof or when uh, should this be completed? So there are a lot of people with a lot of quite a good skills, but they lack that sense of contribution. So do you understand the uh, three uh, different types of people? Some has knowledge, some has knowledge and skills, but there are certain people with, who takes a lot of responsibility, ensure that it's getting delivered, ensure that they contribute uh, with their skills uh, in whichever project they take part. And that, that is a type of people we actually look for uh, if we want to build a roof for our houses, right? And it's it's same in the industry. So in the industry, you have people with knowledge, you have people with skills, but we look for people with knowledge, skills, and the attitude to contribute. So this attitude to contribute is what actually uh, what will what, what will uh, make you special out of the crowd. So this is something very important for you to understand. And in the rest of the presentation, I'm going to actually tell you how do you actually build that attitude to contribute. When, when we were at schools, um, what is the factor we were, we were rewarded for? I'm asking this because I, I, I want to uh, very clearly distinguish the expectations at your school uh, you can actually use the uh, chat uh, to post out of these three, out of these three things at your school, on which aspect were you rewarded most? Was it on the knowledge? Was it on the skills? Was it on the atti attitude to contribute? Think about your school days. Knowledge, yes, I'm getting answers, right? Everybody is saying knowledge. And uh, this mindset, mindset shift is extremely important because when we were in the school, we were given knowledge and we were tested for knowledge. And not so much of skills, right? Uh, we, were, we were tested for, uh, at least um, the time I was at the school. And certainly uh, I can't remember uh, much about the attitude to contribute, right? Uh, and we were never sort of asked as a part of the school curriculum to go and contribute uh, to the society, go and contribute uh, to, a, uh, to a community or to do contributions uh, at your own school, right? Um, so that was never a, a part of the curriculum. But you will now realize this third part your attitude to contribute is actually going to be your most single most important skill or single most important uh, attribute uh, which you, you need to build into you for you to get a good uh, career in, in the industry. Now, uh, this brings us to the next question. Now, 
when we hire people we want to hire people with this attitude to contribute right not just people with knowledge not just people with skills but people with attitude to contribute so here's a, here's my second question now how do you think we uh, find these uh, people um, let me uh, move you into the uh, next um, next question on the mentimeter all right so i moved you uh, to the next question in the uh, mentimeter how does the industry find people with the attitude to contribute there are four answers uh, there are 30 seconds by giving an exam paper by looking at the gpa or your rank in the uh, university or by looking at what's already done by the person or how and what they present at the interview. Um, did you? All right. Okay. I got the. I got the results. Uh, let me share the results with you all. And thank you very much uh, for being very interactive. Uh, and this makes the whole uh, presentation. Uh, interesting for me as well so we have two people saying by giving an exam paper and none saying ranking by the gpa interesting by looking at what's already done and by what's presented at the interview and all four all of these four are important and we actually look at all of the four but there's one thing we particularly look at when finding people who has an attitude to contribute. The people with the attitude to contribute has contributed uh, even before they enter uh, the university or even before they enter the industry. And that we know. So those are the people with the passion, like people with the passion at the school, we find them uh, doing uh, many pet projects. We find them organizing uh, exhibitions, right? Uh, and then when they come to the uh, university, we find them uh, organizing uh, different hackathons. Uh, we find them uh, speaking at meetups. We find them online with a lot of online content uh, under their name. Um, so it's not very difficult to find these people with the attitude to contribute. And uh, here, um, I'm not saying GPA is not important. GPA is extremely important uh, that uh, you need to have. But when it comes to this particular thing, attitude to contribute, we look for the things they had done in the past. We look at the GPA to measure their knowledge. Uh, because that's knowledge is also important. Without knowledge, you can't have skills. Because if you don't know, you can't really do uh, uh, anything practical. But you you need to have all these three things: knowledge, skills, and top of that attitude to contribute. So let me uh, move back to my uh, pres presentation. Right. So now you know uh, we we find these people with attitude to contribute by looking at what they had already done. And you don't need to take me um, this on my words. I can show you a very recent example. This has repeated so many times, and I have so many mails like this. Just uh, look at this real incident. This has happened uh, this month. Uh, actually on 2nd of April, 
and I got a CV uh, from somebody I know. Uh, and then I said, hi, thanks for the CV. Please add the following to your CV and send it back to me if they exist. Number one, your GitHub profile. Why am I asking? Because you are a member of free and open source. Uh, I know some of these words you might not know yet, uh, but, but don't think about the exact words. Uh, we will, you will learn what they are as you go on. Uh, I like to see what projects you have contributed. Second one, what is your blog or the personal website or the articles published? Send me them. And then send me your Stack Overflow account or a similar community account. Right. Um, so this is the, the, the I, I'm very uh, I'm very, I'm very much uh, you know custom to this right. When I get a, a CV, this is what I ask if I don't find this information in the CV. So what I am trying to do is to find out if this particular person had any passion. Uh, for for the field, if if they had any passion, there has to be certain things they had done as contributions. Either they would write uh, articles, uh, or they will do YouTube videos, or they will uh, have open source project contributions, or they will contribute with their knowledge in different forums in the industry. And if you don't find any of them. We know this particular person has no attitude to contribute. So um, we realized this guidance, this particular guidance is lacking uh, in the system uh, for our youth. So for our youth uh, who are in the uh, IT field, um, they still, because probably because this guidance is lacking, uh, they still uh, are in the mindset. Uh, before I make uh, move to this one, uh, let me just uh, blank my screen. Uh, before, uh, sorry. Uh, so when they when they move the move to the IT industry, they don't realize that this attitude to contribute is extremely important for us. Uh, because they directly come from the schooling system where knowledge is the paramount important and this mindset my, my, my mindset shift has not happened um, I, I find it uh, when I talk to a lot of youngsters like um, sometimes I uh, participate uh, in interviews and when uh, the uh, when this uh, a person come uh, to the interview, uh, one question I ask is, uh, what do you expect by uh, getting this job? What do you want to do? Right, uh, this is a question you will also get if you uh, ever meet me uh, at an interview. Uh, why, why do you want this job? Right? And very, very common, like 99% uh, people, they say, I want to learn more, right? I want to learn more. Um, then I ask, if you want to learn more, why are you here? Right? This is industry. I think you need to go back to the university and continue learning more, right? Because if that is what you want, uh, you should actually go back to the university which is also great right we need people uh, in the university uh, who will uh, do research and learn more and progress in their academic career and we need those people and then i say why don't you go back because they don't realize that in the industry the learning becomes an outcome of your contribution you contribute to build the organization you contribute to build the economy, you contribute to build the uh, industry. And as an outcome, you learn a lot. And as an outcome, you gather a lot of skills. But you come to the industry because you want to contribute. Um, and I'm, I'm yet to find anybody coming and telling me I'm here in the industry because I actually want to 
uh, contribute to the industry, contribute to the growth of this organization. Right? And uh, it's quite rarely I actually get that answer. I'm actually telling you all of this because now is a time for you to build all of that contribution. Uh, not when you come to the interview with the industry, because when you come to the interviews, it's too late because we will ask to show the contributions and you will not have anything to show. Okay, I'm uh, getting back uh, to my presentation. So this is, um, this is why uh, industry made bridge um, so that the youth who are getting into the IT field can get started contributing because this future careers bridge.net which you which most of you got registered so it gives you certain uh, certain challenges a set of challenges and those through those challenges you can see what are the most relevant skills industry is expecting and i said not to worry about uh, open source, the wording open source, not to worry about the wording blog, not to worry about the wording wording GitHub. Uh, if you know, great already. Uh, but if you don't know, it's unlikely that these things will be a part of your curriculum, uh, even at the university and uh, unlikely because university uh, might not give exactly um, certain skills uh, um, or certain uh, tools, certain technologies industry is using because universities need to produce much more generic, balanced, concept-oriented individuals. So it's your responsibility to um, connect with the industry and see what are the latest things and what are the contributions you can make um, with the industry and 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 we understood that not everybody can get connected with the industry in the in the same manner so we created this future careers bridge.net so when you go there you will i will actually do a very quick uh, walk through uh, of the site when you go there you will find a certain set of challenges which are like self study uh, self study challenges you can learn by yourself and then it gives it also gives um, an overview of to you on the different work, the different types of work available in the industry. Like there are so many different things you can do. You, you don't need to uh, become a programmer only, right? Uh, programming is good. But if you uh, like uh, uh, visual designs and more creative, visually, visually creative things, art and all, Maybe you can actually become a UX engineer. We call them UI or U, U, UI engineers or UX engineers. Uh, they were called graphic designers also sometime back. But uh, if you like more uh, hands-on gadgetics, mechanics, uh, and devices, and robotics, electronics, and then uh, you can become an IoT engineer internet of things engineer um, and there are many other fields like that so you don't need to just become a programmer there are so many different different fields you can actually um, you can actually uh, build a career on so when you do these challenges you get exposed to these different fields and you might find something more interesting than the other and and that could actually be uh, your future career, uh, you would select to uh, pursue further uh, skills on. And very interestingly, when you learn, this is not only a learning portal. When you learn, we can see who is learning. When I say we, we as the industry, we can see who is learning. And we can rank you uh, on your ability uh, to uh, understand and learn and then we pick the top students and then uh, we connect them with the companies in the industry 
so that they get a, a good exposure very early in their careers or very, very early in their, uh, even uh, as undergraduates, um, you can connect with the companies. And, and these top students, we personally closely mentor them and also put them into different other training programs. Um, so that uh, the people with this with the passion to self learn and contribute, we want to take them into the industry um, because that's how we can grow our organization. That's how we can grow as a country and uh, as an industry. So um, I'll show you how all of that happens. Let me uh, do a very quick walkthrough. Meanwhile, I'm, I didn't get any question yet. Uh, if you have uh, any, uh, anything to ask about the industry or, the, uh, or this uh, Future Careers Bridge website, uh, feel free to uh, post um, onto the chat. All right, um, so I'm pretty sure a lot of you uh, had seen this at least 19 uh of you had seen this uh, because i can see 19 of you got registered uh with this portal um and um and when you uh, come here you get registered i think it's a no brainer uh, you understand what that is uh, and then uh, the second step after registering is for you to solve some challenges when you click on solve challenges you get to a page like this which has 29 challenges and starting from very simple things like use email uh, or create an email address and create a blog and here comes a word blog and if you don't know what a blog is you can actually watch this video which is uh, a person uh, in sri lanka uh, one of your uh, industry uh, professionals uh, had done a video explaining uh, what this challenge is all about. And also you have further learning material for you to learn here. And then you need to do, uh, you need to do certain submissions. Like we are asking you to tell us the link of your new blog. So bloggy is something where you can publish articles, probably you already know, most of you. Um, and, we, and this challenge uh, tells you how to create your own blog. And then you need to answer some simple set of questions just for you to understand how well you understood uh, what a blog is and the use of email. And like that, there are 29 other challenges. And when you actually do these challenges, you will realize it touches in many different uh, sub fields of our industry. Like create a video. How do you create a video, right? And uh, if you actually ex if you become an expert uh, of video creation, probably your your video YouTube channel will bring more money than you know uh, somebody uh, getting a salary uh, from the industry. And I actually have some friends of mine, uh, they left their jobs because their uh, YouTube profile is making more money uh, than um, the salaries they were getting at the industry. And, um, and when you go down, you will realize that there are things, uh, things become a little advanced. Uh, you need to learn how to program and you need to create your community profiles like LinkedIn profile and all of that um, and some English challenges as well and then things become even more advanced uh, as you go on and you can see uh, there are certain device programming Arduino if you had heard about uh, them and uh, I talked about GitHub a while ago and you can see there are certain challenges where you can learn about what GitHub is and all and you can learn about marketing, for example. Like um, if you get into the IT industry, you can become a marketing professional because digital marketing is a big field today and very highly paid as well. 
and if you want to uh, if you like uh, all of the operating systems hacking and all of uh, such subject you can probably become ethical hacker or network administrator um, and this challenge will give you a, a heads up about uh, about it. and then there are certain uh, community profiles uh, if you remember my mail in my mail i was asking from that person who sent me the cv to send their stack overflow profile and here you find that challenge for you to create a stack overflow profile um, and what happens when you learn here and complete these challenges is that as the industry we get to see you um, here um, you can see this is the this is the view we have shared with the industry and the companies in the industry can come here and see who is at the top like this is like a leaderboard leaderboard is where you rank people um, and this ranking is out of 9953 who are learning who had registered and learning uh, under bridge within the year uh, this report is for the particular year 12 months period and um, and we can see out of them who is at the top you can see there's somebody called shashika from puttalam at the top and you can see it they are not actually all of them are not really coming from colombo and gampaha colombo ampal kegol kandi kalutar right? and you can see a lot of people uh, from all around the country are in this dashboard and they are at the top because because they had performed well like um, here i can see uh, how good are they in programming how good they are they in english language um, and uh, overall how good they uh, how good they are and if i want to see the details of a particular individual i can actually go to uh, the next tab and um, okay let me uh, let me because if i go to that tab uh, you will see the contact information uh, of of a person which i don't want to do so uh, let me load that page for you so top uh, most persons id id is 4785 uh, i know you can see you can see what i'm doing but uh, you will see in a while Four seven eight five. Okay, so I load the uh, student who was at the top four seven eight five, and now I can actually go and see all of the submissions they had done. Like for an example, okay, I can see uh, he had created a video and posted that video. URL and if I want to go and see the uh, video he has created, you can see he had done a video uh, for anyone to learn HTML here. And I can go and see his channel, right? And the, 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 this is somebody from, um, I think he was from uh, Puttalam, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, right. Uh, having a having a video um, uh, YouTube channel, and if I want to see uh, what game has uh, has he created, I can uh, see that. And all of these artifacts they had submitted, I can simply go and see here. And this is what uh, industry will see as and when you complete challenges and if you make it to the top we will contact you and we will uh, connect you with the industry we will invite you uh, to come to the industry 
uh, and uh, and also uh, there's another program we do called boot camp uh, which is uh, like a six months uh, program to teach you more uh, about the industry and the skills we expect um, um, and 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 then um, the uh, passionate people the passionate people uh, who will uh, make it to the top of the leaderboard we know as industry, we can hire them. And many of them, when we hire, they get scholarships as well, right? Because we, we know they are, they are the best. Um, and uh, some of them had got uh, full scholarships uh, for uh, further education. Um, and then uh, we hire them and uh, they can even uh, uh, study while they work in the industry. And this is basically bridge. And that's uh, pretty much what I wanted to show you. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, keep posting. Um, there's another one question uh, which came from Chamidu Fernando. Do we need to do tests one by one in order or can we do them randomly? You can actually do them randomly. That's absolutely no issue. Uh, you can do them randomly, but ensure you complete as much as possible because uh, you you uh, you are ranking in the leaderboard is first ranked on the amount of challenges you had completed and then ranked on the score and so if you haven't completed uh, 29 challenges you will probably not make it to the top because there will be a lot of other people who uh, who complete all of the 29 challenges You can even un unmute your mics if you have any question, even uh, regarding the industry, I'm, I'm happy to help uh, because I can relate to you. Uh, I, I, I was like you uh, some years ago uh, and uh, it was uh, at that time, uh, we haven't had sessions like this a lot, but uh, it was uh, Vishaka Madam and few others. Uh, we observed and the passion we observed from them uh, made us to contribute uh, to the industry. And I remember uh, some of those things uh, we were a part of, like hackathons, uh, like meetups, the exhibitions we organized, has actually uh, helped me personally a lot uh, for me to uh, get my first job and also uh, continue uh, throughout my career. That's uh, pretty much what I wanted to uh, share with you. Hasid, you can I ask a question? Yes, madam, please go ahead. Yeah, so you said you, said you look for passion, you get passionate people. Uh, how, how, how do you, like I know you said this, how, how do you measure it? Can you just give a couple of more examples on how you measure that? Because uh, last time I had this question uh, from this group, where they said, oh, industry is paying a uh, totally wrong amount, right? Uh, some, somewhat less than what the industry is paying. Industry is paying this amount for CSC graduates. How much will they be paying us? Uh, so uh, to which I said industry doesn't look at a qualification, but how do you, because I think we are totally unaware of how industry would look at our passion. If you can elaborate a little bit on that. Yes, madam. Uh, thank you for the question. It's a uh, it's a question, and sometimes uh, um, sometimes we uh, we misunderstand how industry operates. Um, like um, there are different uh, different uh, institutions. Uh, we have, uh, for example, government where we uh, have the promotions uh, i might be wrong this is uh, from my my both my parents were government servants so i uh, know the system at that time not now but usually uh, it was very much seniority based uh, at that time uh, i uh, never saw them being a part of uh, like a formal appraisal process uh, to uh, gauge how valuable they are but it was like uh, you need to go rank by rank with the age. But if you see 
the industry that operates in a completely uh, different manner. The industry is always financially driven. This is very important for us to understand. Um, industry is financially driven, like industry is a set of companies and uh, their purpose uh, is to do a business. And that business means they need to be financially oriented and financially driven. So the people who does the most contribution and who brings the most value addition to the organization are the ones who get, uh, who get uh, appreciated the best, right? Uh, why? Uh, the people who bring the most amount of value to the organization basically brings probably most um, the, the best financial value also to the organization. And they are rewarded, rewarded very, very, very highly. They are highly rewarded. And this is why sometimes a lot of uh, people who join the industry can't comprehend this. They say, hey, I am senior, right? How can you pay uh, someone uh, two years younger to me? Right, uh, from my same university more than what I am being paid. And as an industry, we don't even understand that question, right? Uh, what does it mean to be your senior, right? I mean, for us, your seniority doesn't really mean anything uh, to a company. Um, the seniority, seniority does not really make a much difference in the uh, in, in that measurement factor. And then um, comes uh, the knowledge, for example, right? We have people with uh, MBAs, we have people with MSCs, right? They are important, but uh, don't uh, take uh, me wrong. Knowledge is important, right? But then you have people with a lot of knowledge, but there's no contribution, right? So if there's no contribution, the amount of value we get from that individual is lesser than probably somebody who doesn't even have a degree. But the, that person who doesn't even have a degree, uh, 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 I'm actually talking about the qualification here, not the knowledge, qualification, um, might actually be more knowledgeable even because the knowledge is today a commodity, right? Knowledge is available free. Like uh, if you don't get selected to a uh, model tour, you can do uh, MIT degree uh, or online, so probably free of charge, right? Get all of that knowledge. Um, so um, seniority has no meaning and uh, your qualifications also has a very little meaning. Because if you don't contribute, uh, then your qualifications doesn't matter. And your skill also has, does not have a lot of meaning unless you use that skill to contribute to the betterment of the organization. So the people I see who actually move up in the ranks are the people who will pick whatever the opportunity they get at the industry to contribute. Like, uh, we have certain people, we, uh, they, they work um, in uh, quite probably you can call a less interesting type of work. Let's say maintenance work or very old technology, legacy technology. And then we have certain people who are in a very dynamic, very interesting type of work. But still, that person who is in that uh, so-called boring technology or boring project, uh, uh, contributes better for the overall organization. Like he does his work and also he contributes with a uh, lot of other initiatives by himself uh, and help the organization to grow and that person get rewarded. So somebody might say, hey, I know Angular, this particular version, right? He doesn't even know JavaScript. And how can you promote him over me? Because they don't understand how uh, in how the industry operates. 
I'm not sure, madam, I exactly answered uh, the uh, answer to your question, but I attempted. I think, yes, that is, no, that, 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 I don't think there is exact answer, but that is what is what we need to understand, right? The, and I, I actually recollect has it uh, to add a bit to your thing from your life. Uh, I, the, I think probably the only instance where I was a bit disappointed about Hasid for a few minutes, once I went to his office and everybody had nice uh, tables and everything. And then I was asking, hey, Hasid, by the way, where is your office? I was expecting Hasid to show me a flashy new office. And he said, oh, madam, I, I mean, like everybody was laughing. And uh, he said, I go and sit everywhere. I sit with everybody, right? And, and at that time, I thought you were, I, I, I mean, it took me a little while to understand. But as a senior leadership team member, you spend time with everyone to understand how passionate they are. And uh, so there is no one measure like, hey, how many lines of code you wrote last year kind of thing, right? No. So that, I think that is uh, one of the important things uh, we need to understand. It's not the qualification. It's not the degree we bring in. It's, it's not the way we dress. It's the way we contribute to the entire organization that is being rewarded, that is being. And my ne next question is like next question, probably in the minds of most of these people, maybe are we too late to start doing that? Because you said we look at what you have been doing. So uh, large majority of these students would be graduating with BIT by the end of the year. So uh, can we still do it, right? Yes, uh, I think end of the year is uh, almost like uh, infinity for me, right? I mean, <laughs> there's so much days and so much hours before end of the year. So uh, if you start now, absolutely, you can have a great profile uh, by end of the year. If you start now, uh, believe me, uh, you know, one other thing I do, uh, I... Um, uh, if you send your CV to me, I will first search by your first name on Google. If I don't find you, I'll search by your first name and the last name. And even if I don't uh, find you then, probably I'll look at the next CV, right? Uh, unless, I'm, uh, unless I'm actually hiring an ethical hacker. Usually ethical hackers don't want to be seen um, on, on internet. Uh, but other than that, uh, I expect you to have your profile uh, and six months is good enough time for you to start building your profile online, uh, create your Stack Overflow profile, create your blog, uh, create a YouTube channel, not the Facebook page. Uh, we don't really <laughs> look at that. Uh, your LinkedIn, your articles, uh, all of that um, and contribute to few open source projects. And if you don't do any of it, I mean, right? Uh, you, you, you don't deserve to be <laughs> uh, picked, spe uh, picked like spe spe as a special person, right? And you will uh, just be one of the uh, uh, hundreds and thousands of others. So for you to be, sp be special, you need to uh, have those uh, contribution, um, uh, contribution uh, we call them uh, dots we call them dots like uh, we see how many dots you have in your past uh, like this came from uh, Steve Jobs if you uh, remember the famous quote he said uh, you can't connect dots by looking forward you can only connect dots by looking backwards and when you look backwards you will see some of the dots you made connected and brought you to where you are. So just keep on making dots, just keep on uh, creating uh, contributions. Dots means contributions and, uh, and six months is good enough time, madam. Sure, yes, uh, but uh, you need to have that correct attitude, right? As you said, it's a it's long time for one person. It's a, so if you think that I need to improve myself, I need to do this. I think even you can have a lot of dots by the time you graduate. So that is the important thing. And I hope that everyone understands it it's, and start doing however little things are. Now, 
I, despite a hectic schedule, I spent the whole hour listening to Hasi. I'm pretty sure if I ask Hasi, Hasi, can you come home and tell me that Hasi would have done that also. I have listened to Hasi many a times, but still I learned something. So make sure that you try to take the opportunities, take every opportunity. You may be having a huge, wonderful blog, but go and do that on the Future Careers Bridge as well. Uh, the, then you get seen, you understand, and you understand where your weaknesses are, right? Where you, because last week we talked about try, try and understand where you need improvement so that, that you can do. Any questions and asking?